Hey, it's Mike here, and today's something I've personally been waiting for, which is the follow-up study to the Stanford Twin Experiment. It had a show on Netflix, I covered it then, responded to criticisms, etc. but now we have more data on age-related biomarkers, which is super fascinating. They didn't just look at telomeres here, which are the caps on the end of your DNA that protect your DNA as we age. They also looked at like a dozen other age-related markers, talking epigenetics, even looking at age of certain things like your liver and your hormones. And in case you're wondering, I am in Barcelona. I was just at the UK vegan camp out and just went to Amsterdam as well and had an amazing time meeting a bunch of you guys, which was awesome. And now I'm in Barcelona for an entire month and it is hot and I turned all the fans and AC and stuff around here off. So I'm just gonna get progressively sweatier. Anyway, in the interest of us not getting older during the intro of this video, let's go. <laughs> so you might've seen recent headlines like this one from the Telegraph, which I will say is like 75% poo-pooing on the study and mentioning like theoretical limitations. So I'll respond to that in a little bit, but yeah, this is the main study right here in BMC Medicine, really recently came out. Another funny blip on my radar was not necessarily a criticism directly, but a carnivore dieter tweeted that <laughs> there was no surprise assuming that the results were bad, not even understanding the headlines and that the results were, spoiler alert, good in terms of vegans and aging markers. This makes me wonder what else they've been wrong about. Like, did they read the WHO's finding that meat causes cancer and just think, oh, meat prevents cancer. I'm gonna go on a carnivore. That's the only thing that could explain it. But to the main study structure, yes, we're talking about twins here, which is the perfect control group, genetically identical people born at a approximately the same time. And in this case, it was a two month study. The first month they provided food either on a healthier vegan diet or a healthier omnivorous diet. And then the second month they made their own food for those types of diets. And despite the study having a lot going for it, a credible institution being a randomized control trial on twins, people of course criticized it anyway. And there are some imperfections in the study as with every single study. And I responded to a lot of those in my previous video, but one for example is like, oh, this really isn't a healthy omnivorous diet. It could be healthier. Well, I mean, look at this chart of how their vegetable consumption increased. Clearly, they were eating healthier in many ways. And back to like carnivore dieters and stuff, you know, they probably would say that those vegetables are dangerous and made that group less healthy. So it's all a matter of perspective and opinion. All right, let's start with something that a lot of people are familiar with and I mentioned previously because we had preliminary results on telomeres. Again, the protective caps on your DNA. Now they've been referred to as the shoelace caps, like on the end of your shoelaces and they generally decrease in length with age. That's what is assumed, but then in the past we've seen other plant-based diet studies showing, hey, these are actually increasing in length, and we saw that, yes, in the unpublished data in this study. And then we have this chart, the official peer-reviewed results. And yes, you can see that the vegan group's telomeres got longer, you know, previously not thought to be something you could do. And these results are less than a p-value of 0.05. They are statistically significant and every result I'm gonna talk about in this study is as well. But I wanna to get to some of these other really interesting markers. And there are some markers that we're not even gonna have time to cover because this was actually quite a large study, especially as a follow-up study. But we can first get to the epigenetic type markers. In particular, they looked at a few markers of epigenetic age acceleration. And epigenetics, as you may know, is essentially switches on top of your DNA that express different things, different traits, different features, processes. And to the American Heart Association, epigenetic age acceleration describes a phenomenon in which an individual's epigenetic age calculated by epigenetic clocks is greater than expected baseline on his or her chronological age, how old you literally are. And then of course that people with older epigenetic age than chronological age have implications for morbidity, diseases, and mortality. And to get a little bit nerdier, this is measured through DNA methylation. You, know, you can see this image here, explains it all. Now you have a PhD. But to the study, quote, in the vegan group, we observed significant decreases in the following epigenetic age metrics, PC Grim Age, that means the Grim Reaper isn't coming for you, <laughs> and a couple other ones, PC all again, significantly decreased at eight weeks relative to the beginning. So that's pretty incredible in terms of DNA and gene expression. We have not just the telomere age, but we also have the epigenetic age improving. You know, this isn't a normal thing from lifestyle interventions, it seems. so. That's impressive, but next we have a bunch of different systems that were looked at. They said that they found five systems that decreased in terms of their age metrics in the vegan group. And in particular, we're talking about inflammation age, heart age, hormone age, liver age, and metabolic age. 
They say, quote, in contrast, no epigenetic clock or telomere measure exhibited significant changes in the omnivorous cohort, so no improvement. And perhaps the most important one is they looked at a composite of all of these systems of the body. They called it systems age, and vegans, of course, improved in that as well. So pretty awesome. So yeah, again, this appears to be the first time that such a comprehensive look at age-related biomarkers has been done in a vegan population, and the results are pretty awesome. And this brings me to the anecdotes I see all the time. I was just at the UK vegan camp out, and one of the conversations I had at least a couple times was people saying, hey, everyone thinks that I'm younger than I actually am. You know, one woman was like, I'm generally clocked at 14 years younger than my real age. And a lot of that is directly from photo aging from the sun, and perhaps we can help a little bit with carotenoids building up in the skin and preventing some of that damage. But I think sunscreen and sun exposure are probably the two main ones there. And I think it really helps to just have people neutrally look at vegans and how old they are. Because if someone on a low carb or carnivore diet looks at a vegan, they immediately think they look horrible and are about to die. But you know, in general, somebody who doesn't know, for example, somebody who didn't know that I was vegan the other day thought I was in my 20s. Anyway, they also looked at some other markers and they looked at some type two diabetes genetic markers, which are loosely associated. One improved, one did not in the vegan diet. And then we also randomly had some higher basophils, which are an immune marker in the vegan diet. It wasn't a big change though, and there's no real explanation for it. So I don't know, keep an eye on that one. And that can bring us to some of the limitations of the study. Again, that Telegraph article essentially just pooped on the study for most of it. And they were like, yeah, in the study, the vegans did better in terms of age markers. Yeah, they got younger, but you know, maybe way down the line past this study, they would just do worse and be older. <laughs> in other words, they're saying this was a two month study. We don't know what would happen a decade later. Vegans could be worse off, but that's again, just like really speculative and this is the information that we have now. And of course they base that on no citations. They just bring in random like experts to be like, eh, I don't really know how legit this is. Anyway, we also have other limitations that the study brought to the surface themselves. They said, quote, it is still uncertain whether the observed benefits may be primarily due to greater weight loss in the vegan group. And then that was another one of the criticisms that there was a little bit of a calorie difference, but you know, looking to this chart, 1700 versus 1800 calories, per day on average isn't insanely different. And, and it is the case that it can be part of the diet itself in terms of you know how many bites you can fit in, how much fiber there is, fiber literally triggering satiety signals. So yeah, I don't think we've seen results like this from other studies where there's like a 100, 150 calorie difference. So in the end, yeah, this just adds to a wider body of knowledge showing that you know, vegans are doing quite well in terms of health. And despite all the concerns that people have, you know, we just keep on getting more and more studies like this. Now this matches right up with Brian Johnson, although he's an N of one doing his anti-aging experiment, all of his biomarkers being super good as well. And it matches up on the various studies showing that vegans have lower disease rates like diabetes, cancer, etc. You know, it's all probably part of eating more plants and getting all those antioxidants and not getting as many potentially harmful chemicals. Anyway, I'm getting pretty sweaty. I'm gonna jump in some body of water. So yeah, vegans, keep on staying young. And of course, feel free to let me know down below what you think about this study, if there are any limitations or other things that I didn't mention that were interesting. And as usual, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.